Let me introduce you to Maniac, a Netflix miniseries starring Emma Stone and Jonah Hill about a series of drugs that aim to cure every mental illness. The show does a fantastic job of what it sets out to do, portray how broken people can be and what steps should be taken to acknowledge and live with their issues. It does this in a very overzealous science fiction-y, almost comic booky way. There's an artificial intelligence becoming self-aware, a shady organization dealing in even shadier medical practices, and of course, the supposed super drug that'll fix all your problems. Maniac also utilizes the time-honored storytelling technique of weaving a deeper meaning into its plot, this being a clear stance on coping with mental illnesses. The biggest hurdle to overcome with this form of storytelling is not making the message too obvious. You don't want your audience to feel like they're being preached to. You're making a narrative storyline, not a PSA. It takes a lot of subtlety and care to correctly utilize this technique, which is what Maniac accomplishes. When we meet its two main characters, they are at pivotal times in their lives. Annie Landsberg has hit rock bottom during a years-long bout of depression, culminating in running out of a drug that gave Gave her just a bit of happiness. Owen Milgram is conflicted with his decision to lie in a court of law for the betterment of a family who has only ever ostracized him due to his schizophrenia. Just a couple of healthy boys here. These are both tortured characters who are about to start on a path of self-discovery. As expected, when you watch this story come together, when you see Annie and Owen struggle to deal with their emotions that inevitably guide them toward the drug trial, you feel uneasy. This isn't only because of the characters' seemingly tragic pasts or the somber tone the show's direction holds, though. It's because of the world Maniac is set in. Character origin and tone are very important for making your audience feel a certain way, yes, but what really drives that home is the world they live in. You'll usually see this in weather. When a director wants you to be sad, it's raining. When they want you to be happy, it's bright and sunny out, yay! These work, but most of the time it just stops there. It's not often more attention is directed in the tone of the world than simple things like weather or time of day. Maniac is set in an alternate reality, not unlike our own. Like It Follows in certain episodes of Black Mirror before it, Maniac focuses on the unimportant details of its world to distinguish it from our own, and then immediately throws them out the window because they don't matter. Why do they have clamshell looking phone things and it follows? Who cares? You stopped to ask and now there's a humanoid sexually transmitted demon on its way to kill you. Two of my favorite cases of these seemingly unimportant details in Maniac are two services called AdBuddy and Friend Proxy. AdBuddy allows you to purchase anything where applicable for the small price of having an AdBuddy read advertisements to you aloud for a certain period of time, depending on the purchase. Friend Proxy lets you at any time hire and meet up with someone who will act like your friend, seemingly after being given a backstory and list of traits. These two apps are given little to no direct expectations position in the show. There's no character that's like, ad buddy, golly gee, what's that, mister? We learn about these services through the direct uses of them, or their presence in the background. The reason these details and many more throughout the show like them nail that uneasiness is because of their reflection in our world. This is something that Black Mirror is constantly commended for doing, having a world that's just like ours, and yet not at all. Take Nosedive, an episode from series 3 which presents an alternate future where every job, service, and purchase is gated behind a universal rating system. If you're not highly rated in your community, you're practically worthless in the eyes of this version of our world. Maniac is much more vague about it all. The timeline is uncertain. Its technology is varied. Societal issues are irrelevant. It's a world with an animatronic chess-playing koala in an otherwise normal park. A world where, if you need a friend, you just hire a new one using an app on your phone. A world where mental illness continues to be one of the toughest challenges humanity will ever face. Small details between our world and this one are different, but what matters to the real story, to the message of the show, is unchanged. At the end of it all, Maniac is a show dedicated to driving home the message that mental illnesses are not inherently a bad thing, and we shouldn't hope for some magic pill that will make them go away. We should be comfortable learning to cope with them, and our peers should be patient with us as we do. Our problems are personal, and they're different for everyone. There's no perfect way to show someone they need help. There's no perfect way to make someone wake up and realize something about themselves. That's why there isn't, and never will be, an instant cure for insecurities or depression or any other mental issue under the sun. Maniac delivers this message spectacularly through its use of world building and the time it spends on the minutia. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. I didn't spoil too much. Hey guys, thanks for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's sort of a taste of what's to come with Orm's Corner, but also not at all. That was technically an episode of The Show With Issues, so if you want to see more of that, there's more of that over here, I imagine. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. It wasn't about a comic book. I hope that doesn't anger you. I'm, I'm gonna go now.